And in this morning's breakfast bite, German folklore says that a fierce protector, the nutcracker, bears its teeth to the evil spirits and serves traditional messenger of good luck and goodwill. And it also cracks nuts. I was just going to say. Sometimes it doesn't. You really have to like, you know, like break it before you crack a nut. Yeah, just mm. on Sometimes it. you feel like a nut. So heading out the door today, a little chilly out there, but not as bad as yesterday. Yeah, it's not quite as uh, chilly as yesterday. Temperatures on your way out the door in the upper 30s to lower 40s. Cliché time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we will see the upper 40s to lower 50s this afternoon. Skies going to be clearing from west to east throughout the day today. Tons of sunshine headed our way for tomorrow. Rain chances by the day on Sunday. And temperatures, well, they were all over the place in the computer models today. A uh, little bit of cooler headed our way for Saturday. Thought we might get near the 60 degree mark. Doesn't look like that's going to pan out. And we will be watching for the potential for maybe a coastal storm by midweek next week. Mm, well, watch out for that. Yep. All right. You are watching WBOC News this morning. It is 6 o'clock. Now, WBOC News This Morning, Delmarva's News Leader. It's a tragic ending to an overnight fire here in Magnolia. I'm Cleo Green reporting live in Kent County. What investigators are saying about a deadly fire. Another fire in Accomack County where the latest of 30 fires happened and how many blazes crews had to battle just this week. Back again, what they say the pepper box peeper was spotted and how they described the suspect. Now, WBOC News This Morning, Delmarva's News Leader. Good morning, you're watching WBOC News This Morning. I'm Lacey Griffith. I'm Jimmy Hoppe. And I'm meteorologist Brian Keene. It is Thursday, December 13th. Mm, so the end of the work week looking pretty nice. Yeah, not bad. Lots of sunshine and temperatures. Well, they'll be warming up a little bit during the day tomorrow. Today, fairly similar to what we saw out there yesterday. A few scattered showers off our southeastern coastline, uh, riding along that area of low pressure that's uh, located well to our south. Not really going to give us any chance for rain, but good bit of cloud cover out there this morning, at least early in the day. Lots of sunshine heading into the weekend for tomorrow, and yeah, it's been quiet as of late. Maybe a nor'easter on the horizon? Well, it is certainly possible. Kind of looking iffy, I mean, a little bit on the extended forecast, but uh, we will be watching an area of low pressure possibly strengthen and give us some pretty strong winds and rain by uh, early next week. So we'll have more information on that coming up in just about five minutes. We'll, hate, we'll wait to hear about that. Thanks, Brian. Breaking news this morning out of Kent County, Delaware. One person dead, three others taken to the hospital after a fire tore through a mobile home in Magnolia, according to the assistant fire marshal. Fire crews say they got the call for the blaze on Juanita Drive around 1045 last night. WBOC's Cleo Green is live in Magnolia. And Cleo, there were other people injured in this fire. Well, Lacey, Jimmy, the Magnolia Fire Chief tells me two victims were taken to the Crozier Burn Center in Pennsylvania. He tells me those victims were severely burned trying to escape this home right here on Juanita Drive. And as we look at the yard here, part of the roof is laying just a few feet away. There are also children's toys in sight. And as we roll on some video from late last night, a close neighbor told me a family of four was inside this home at the time of the fire. She told me a woman, her two grandchildren and, 12, and a 12 year old child uh, that she was raising as her own. Now that neighbor told me the woman was standing in the yard yelling for a young child to find their way outside the home, but the flames and smoke were out of control. The assistant state fire marshal for Delaware says this was a deadly fire confirming one fatality. The state fire marshal says the victim of the fire was found burned beyond recognition. Officials say the body was sent to a medical examiner and an autopsy will be performed this afternoon. Neighbors in the area who say they saw the flames coming from this home and moments after they heard screams. Many neighbors here on Juanita Drive say they are fully aware and believe a child's life was taken from this overnight fire. Especially being burned, you know, you know it, that's a terrible death, awful death to be, uh, you know, in the fire. And, you know, what I seen, you know, the flames and the noise from that fire was really awful. It was awful. I couldn't explain it. And investigators say the scene of the fire is now secure and they are trying to figure out the nature and origin of this fire. Reporting live here in Kent County, Cleo Green, WBOC News. All right, Cleo, thank you. The third fire in the past week, the 30th overnight fire in a month. Last night, fire crews in Accomack County responding to another abandoned building blaze. 
we could see the fire before we got to the station. It was well involved. Last night's Accomac blaze was reported just after 9 p.m. The abandoned home fire was near the 22,000 block of Ticktown Road. Fire investigators say it's still too early to tell if last night's fire is connected with 27 confirmed arson cases in Accomac County since November. Police fielded another call for who they believe is the pepper box peeper in Wicomico County. Police say they responded yesterday morning to Pembroke Court on the Maryland side of Del Mar. One woman says she saw an all black figure lurking outside a home on Pembroke Court in Del Mar. Some folks in the area say knowing the peeper is out there is disturbing. I think it's not right for the good people to live locked up in their houses while our neighborhoods are controlled. Maryland State Police say they were not able to locate anyone after this apparent sighting in Wicomico County. A former Wicomico County Sheriff's deputy faces child sex abuse charges. Police say 44-year-old Kendall Elmer West of Salisbury had several sexually oriented incidents with a then 15-year-old student at a Salisbury High School. Police say the alleged three-year abuse began in 1999. West is being held on $100,000 bond in Wicomico County. A church-sponsored Boy Scouts of America troop faces a lawsuit by a Delaware man. In yesterday's suit, Melvin Novak alleges newly released Boy Scout perversion files support his claim that the organization hid abuse for years. Former Scoutmaster Vance Hine already in prison for a 1999 conviction in Novak's case. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints says they believe abusers deserve legal prosecution and church discipline. Another morning as you head out, you might want to bundle up a little bit because it's a cold start to the day. Yeah, a little chill in the air out there this morning. Not quite as a, uh, cold as it could be for mid-November, but uh, definitely uh, feeling the effects of uh, the uh, middle of the month. Now, it is December, and yeah, temperature's going to uh, start to feel like a little on down the line, but not out there this morning in the upper 30s to lower 40s. And uh, dealing with uh, really no rain here on the peninsula, but it is darn close just off to our south associated with that area low pressure that will uh, continue to work its way uh, off of the coastline today. So we're going to deal with the clouds this morning and then the clouds kick uh, back in and uh, start to deteriorate as we progress into the afternoon. As far as temperatures go, upper 40s to lower 50s today. Clearing skies by the time we hit the late afternoon and early evening. But like I said, banking on a good bit of cloud cover out there this morning. Current temperatures mid 30s right now at the Air Force Base in Dover, central and southern Del Mar right there in the lower 40s and we will be warming up but not all that much due to the northerly winds which will remain in the forecast. Those winds blowing at about 5 to 10 miles an hour throughout the day today, maybe around the 15 mile an hour range along the immediate coastline. Again, socked in with the cloud cover. Clouds already starting to break across western Maryland and will follow suit across the central portion of the state and eventually the eastern shore here by late morning into the early afternoon. Taking a look at the big picture, area low pressure presses away from the coastline. Area high pressure scoots in from the west. Will provide us with lots of sunshine out there through the day tomorrow. And it looks like setting up shop, our next system, that will give us some chances for rain. But those rain chances are going to hold off until the end of the weekend. So Futurecast walking us through the next 36 hours shows the clouds dissipating by the afternoon hours and lots of clarity of the skies overnight tonight. And then tons of sunshine as we round out the work week for tomorrow. Rain chances will work their way back into the forecast by the end of the weekend. Looking for a chance for some scattered showers Sunday into Monday. Better chances for more substantial rain late in the day Monday into Tuesday as an area of low pressure kind of strengthens off of the coastline. Hopefully keeping the majority of the rainfall at bay along with the winds, but uh, could get a little little nasty as we begin the work week next week. We'll keep tabs on that and have a better handle on it as we get a little closer. Rainy days and Mondays. I don't like that word nasty. Nasty is not good. I like calm. Pretty sunshine. Beautiful. Let's focus on today. Yeah, nice there day we today. go. Keeping children or helping children rather in, in need on Delmarva. How much people like you and businesses have helped donate to WBOC's Bless Our Children campaign at 608 on WBOC News this morning. And coming up on CBS This Morning at 7 a.m. immediately following WBOC News This Morning. Hello to you, I'm Gail King. Coming up, those hidden hotel fees, unnecessary extras, required tips will help you avoid paying more than you have to. Coming up on CBS This Morning. But first, WBOC is proud to serve Chop Tank and proud to serve all of Caroline County. With more on Chop Tank, WBOC's flying weatherman, meteorologist John Trout in Chopper 16. The village of Chop Tank in Caroline County was one of the busiest wharfs on the Chop Tank River during the canning boom of the 1800s. 
The grandeur of the homes in town testify to the prosperity of those times. Three steamboats a day and countless other craft under power and sail left here with produce for Baltimore. A large commercial shad and herring fishery that caught as many as 60,000 fish in a day headquartered at the dock. The village was called Medford's Wharf until the post office came in the 1890s. Chop tank is an Indian word that means flows both ways, describing the tidal nature of the river. The population is around 100. WBOC is proud to serve Chop Tank and all of Caroline County and proud to partner with my friends at Johnny Janosik World of Furniture in Laurel and Dover. Furniture and accessories make great gifts that last a lifetime. And there's no bigger selection than at one of America's largest furniture stores. And if you'll stop by and tell them WBOC's flying weatherman sent you, they'll give you one of these free mugs. I'm meteorologist John Trout at Chopper 16. You're watching WBOC News This Morning with Jimmy Hoppe, Lacey Griffin, Cleo Green, meteorologist Brian Keene, and Chopper 16, covering the entire peninsula for Delmarva's news leader. Good morning at 612 on WBOC News This Morning. Our Bless Our Children campaign continues. Bless Our Children's an initiative of the Draper Holdings Charitable Foundation. We still need a lot more help to give more than 12,000 Delmarva children a very Merry Christmas. Let's check in with Jimmy and Lisa from Delmarva Life to see our grand total so far from people like you and how businesses are pitching in. Well, we're now less than two weeks away to the holiday and folks, we need your help through the Hebron Savings Bank Bless Our Children's Challenge. We will donate to more than 60 charities. Now those charities will then buy presents for 12,000 children here on Delmarva. We have had so many businesses already participate in the challenge, but there's always room for more. Hebron Savings Bank kicked off the challenge with their $2,500 donation. Friendly's Restaurant has donated $10,000 to the challenge. We'd also like to thank the Ocean City Elks Lodge, number 2645, as well as Atlantic Millwork and Cabinet Tree, the Delaware Electric Cooperative, and Sam's Club. Thanks to Faith Chapel Presbyterian Church, ABC Refrigeration, and Scott Rice Termite and Pest Control, as well as Bunting and Bertrand Incorporated, ASAP Pumping and Disposal Services, and Ripley's Believe It or Not Auditorium and Ripley's Mirror Maze also donated. We also need to thank Auntie Ann's Pretzels at the Center at Salisbury, Spencer Enterprises, and Atlantic Community Thrift Shop, Chesapeake Paving, Hobbs Contractors, and B&R Boyer Pressure Washing. 
Thank you to Brazier's Pest Control, Miller's Lawn Service of Lewis, and Bethany United Methodist Men's Club for your contribution. Also, Wicomico Yacht Club, Mid-Atlantic Heating and Air Conditioning, and Blue Hen Springworks. A big thank you to Gary K. Marshall Insurance Agency, H&M Bay, Inc., and PNC Bank have participated in our Bless Our Children Challenge. Thank you also to M&M Properties, LLC, Advance Alert Medical Alarms, and Smoky Farms. Thank you to Tony Tank Tribe Number 149, Redman Lodge, Manager and staff of Horner Honda, Don Lee Margin Corporation, Carries United Methodist Church, Pet Poultry Products, and Reed Trucking Company. We'd like to recognize Foster Concrete, Daisy Well Drilling of Gumboro, and Johnny Genosics Incorporated, as well as RT Absher General Contracting and KMB Auto, Delmar, Delaware. Also, J. Stacy Hart Engineering. Couldn't do it without Pasco's Battery Warehouse in Fruitland, Tron's Pool Car, uh, Pool Care, Bossom and Duckett Electric. Also, a shout out to Sundance Pools of Delmarva, Baker Boys Farm Service, and Seaford Concrete Products. We'd like to thank Mr. Mulch of Seaford, Holland Jewelers, and Affordable Business Systems, as well as First Service Heating and Air Conditioning, Fisher's Popcorn, Fenwick, Bethany, and Rehoboth, and Easy Loans. TGM Group, Peninsula Imaging, E&K Land Management Incorporated. We'd also like to recognize Kosky Enterprises, the Pumpkin Chunkin Association, and Trimper's Rides of Ocean City. Doug's Tire Service, All Saints Parish Thrift Shop, and Rommel's Ace, as well as members of local 1307 International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, American Legion Post 123, and John, uh, Joan W. Jenkins Foundation. The Commander Hotel, the employees of Rightway Flagging and Sign Company, the Salisbury Fraternal Order of Eagles 4503, they've all chipped in. We'd also like to recognize Lower Shore Giant Food, Ocean RV Center, and the staff of Bob Willie and Sons. As well as Hollis Warren, Inc., Salisbury Elks Lodge Number 817, and Chop Tank Electric Cooperative. Chris Nagel Trucking, Inc., Idlewild Ruritan Club, and medical staff of Nanacoke Health Services. Thank you to Eastern Shore Chapter of the Antique Truck Club of America, Fisher's Popcorn on the boardwalk in downtown Ocean City, and a special thank you to the Salisbury Moose Lodge, Drs. Ahmad Benner and Butler at Retina Consultants of Delmarva, Hoffman Irrigation in Federalsburg, and Friends of Bel Air Auto Auction. We also want to thank a Delmar Farmer, Clearview Farms Incorporated, and Best Ace Hardware, as well as TWK Consulting Group, Inc., Professional Leasing Incorporated, and Whitehall Neck Sportsman Club. Thank you to Cape Orthopedics, Hudson Consulting, Auto Plus and Marine Goodyear Tires and Service, Hickman Beach Plaza in Bethany Beach, NRG, the Indian River Generating Station, in memory of Augie Wise. We also want to thank Somerset Soil Conservation, Eastern Shore Forest Products Incorporated, and check this out. So far wow. we've raised $140,100 for Bless Our Children, that's absolutely amazing. That's so let's keep it going. Now, if your business donates at least $1,000, we will thank you and put your business name on the Hebron Savings Bank Challenge list. To make your business donation, you can donate online at WBOC.com or you can send your check to us here. WBOC, 1729 North Salisbury Boulevard, Salisbury, Maryland, 21801. Now, your business can also donate at any Hebron Savings Bank location. Just make sure you note you stepped up to the Hebron Savings Bank Challenge. Now, still dealing with clouds this morning. Brian will let us know when the sunshine returns in full force. It's 617 on WBOC News this morning.
Well, just after 618 on WBOC News this morning, nothing much to talk about here locally, but the rainfall has been in close proximity to us over the last 12 hours, just off our southeastern coastline. Really not expecting any measurable rain, but certainly socked in with the clouds to start the day today. Chilly temperatures at the bus stop as the kids head out this morning. They can anticipate the upper 30s to lower 40s. Good bit of cloud cover to start the day, but the clouds already starting to clear out across western Maryland. Uh, soon to be followed by uh, folks across the central portion of the state and uh, right here on the peninsula. Skies will be clearing from west to east late morning into early afternoon. Lots of sunshine by the time we hit the afternoon hours and uh, temperatures to start the day right around the 40 degree mark here in Salisbury. We're coming in at 35 in Dover. We will be warming up, but not all that much. North northeasterly winds blowing at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. We'll keep temperatures right around our seasonal average in the upper 40s to lower 50s. Decreasing clouds today and tons of sunshine heads our way to round out the work week. Coming up, I'll let you know how long the sun will be sticking around and when our next chance of a peninsula wide rain will be working its way back into the forecast. So in other words, we still have a chance of winter coming. Oh yeah, still Maybe. a chance, but we'll find out about that. Well, in sports this morning, Scott Abraham has this week's high school boys basketball power poll. There were several changes in the rankings. Jimmy, you read it, you read it. Find out which teams made it into our top five. It's 621 on WBOC <laughs> News this morning. <laughs> Hey, how you doing folks? For high school boys basketball teams on Delmarva, December is when mistakes are bound to happen. This is the time where players begin to gel as one team. It's called cohesion. Without it, you're not going very far come February and March. In our Bayside Conference Power Poll, number five is Kent County. A tough opening season loss to Bennett, but the Trojans have bounced back winning two straight. Parkside comes in at number four. I love the makeup of this team. The Rams are long and athletic. Let's welcome Bennett in the third position. The Clippers are 3-0 to start the young season. Later tonight, they will host Chrisfield. Number two is why high good old Butch Waller has the Indians playing some good basketball. The big question, can they keep it up? And our number one team, Easton. Very impressive to start the season. The Warriors already have wins over Pocomo and Queen Anne's. In the Henlopen Conference, Cape Henlopen is number five. Last week, the Vikings were handled at home by Sanford. Cape will host Sussex Tech on Friday night. Woodbridge is placed in the fourth slot. I don't think many people before the season started thought the Blue Raiders would be 3-0 after the first week of the year. They are certainly playing well. 
Sussex Central is number three, another surprise team in our rankings. The Golden Knights have already knocked off CR and Smyrna. Number two is Sussex Tech, 4-0 and looking strong. Head coach Steve Perry has the Ravens heading in the right direction. And our number one team in the conference, Poly Tech, already 3-0. The Panthers are the team to beat this season. And Poly Tech is back in action on Friday night against Lake Forest. If that was your look at sports. Hey, have a great Thursday. We'll look for several chances for rain over the next seven days. And around 628, Brian's going to pinpoint those chances and let you know which days you're going to need the umbrella. It's 625. Ooh, Del Marvelous decoration. Check out this photo sent to us from Newswatcher Melissa Malcolm of Del Sadler's Landscaping Company in St. Michael's. That's terrific. That's I a love, lot of good stuff, that's huh? That's a great display there. You know, if you got a picture, we'd love to see it. Send it with your name in town to media at WBOC.com. It is almost 626. And this morning's breakfast bite, did you know, although nutcrackers have been around for ages, they weren't always the collectible item. In fact, nutcrackers only became popular in the United States about 50 years ago. Hmm, who knew? Good morning, it's 628 on WBOC News this morning. So we're a little over a week left until Christmas, but it's not beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Temperature's still not too bad. Not too bad out there. And if you check my face space page out, uh, you can see that uh, white Christmas forecast. Ooh. I'll give you a hint, it's not looking good for oh. us. Anyway, uh, heading on into the weekend, it looks like we are going to see temperatures a couple degrees above seasonal average back in the mid 50s. Might not get quite as warm as we initially thought on Saturday, but uh, the model is kind of up and down with the temperatures once we get into the weekend and heading into next week. So I uh, could see some fluctuation in that uh, as well as with our rain chances. We are expecting some shower chances come Sunday. Monday into Tuesday looks like it could get interesting. We'll be watching an area of low pressure, possibly strengthening off of the coastline. It is supposed to retrograde back towards us. Some of the models have it a little bit farther off to the north, some of it uh, a little closer to us. So we will see some rain chances, a little iffy on the timing 
just know that it's going to be well above average heading into uh, Christmas week. And the end of the work week is looking pretty nice. Yeah, not looking shabby. Sunshine like on it Friday. Liking it a lot. All right, well, that sounds good. We'll stay there for now. You are watching WBOC News this morning. It's 6.30. Now, WBOC News This Morning, Delmarva's News Leader. A tragic end to an overnight fire in Magnolia. I'm Cleo Green reporting live in Kent County. What investigators are saying about a deadly fire this morning? 30 fires in Accomack County in 30 days. I think the physical and mental stress on the volunteers is more taxing than anything. How the late night calls are putting too much additional stress on the departments. And getting help after a disaster, what steps Somerset County residents need to take this week in order to get insurance money following Superstorm Sandy. Good morning, you're watching WBOC News This Morning. I'm Jimmy Hoppe. Good morning, I'm Lacey Griffith. And I'm meteorologist Brian Keene. It is Thursday, December 13th. A little cooler, but not really that bad this morning. Not all that bad. Temperatures uh, right about uh, where they should be in most locations along the beaches, but a little bit warmer than average in inland locations this morning. Triple track Doppler radar, not much to talk about it. You might be able to make a little bit of green at the bottom of your screen associated with that area low pressure that continues to sit off of our coastline, providing us with some cloud cover this morning, but little if any chance for rain today. We'll see clearing skies from the west to the east as temperatures work their way back into the upper 40s to lower 50s this afternoon, but if you like it a little bit warmer, won't have to wait too long. We'll talk about those weekend temperatures in about five minutes. Warmer in December. Hmm. All right. Well, following breaking news out of Kent County, Delaware, an overnight blaze tears through a Magnolia home, claiming one person's life. Fire crews say three other people were injured in that fire. WBOC's Cleo Green is live in Magnolia this morning near the Juanita Road home. So, Cleo, we understand we have more information on the other three victims. Yes, uh, Jimmy Lacey, the Magnolia Fire Chief tells me two victims are now at the Crozier Burn Center in Pennsylvania. He tells me those two victims were severely burned uh, trying to escape this home right here on Juanita Drive. As we look at the yard here, a part of the roof is laying just a few feet away. There's also children's toys in sight. And as we roll on some video from late last night, a close neighbor told me a family of four was inside this home at the time of the fire. A woman, her two grandparents, grandchildren and a 12 year old child that she was raising as her own. Now that neighbor told me the woman was standing in the yard yelling for a young child to find their way outside the home, but the flames and smoke were out of control. The assistant state fire marshal for Delaware says this was a deadly fire, confirming one fatality. The state fire marshal says the victim of the fire was found burned beyond recognition and officials say the body was sent to a medical examiner and an autopsy will be performed this afternoon. That is when we will be able to confirm if the victim was indeed a child. Neighbors in the area who say they saw flames coming from the home said moments after they heard screams. And I just seen a whole bunch of flames and the people that live in, in that house run next door to I guess get the people next door to help them, try to get the little girl out. And I guess when they try to get her out, all they all I heard was her screaming, help, help, help. And investigators say the scene of the fire is now secure, and they say that the total estimate of damages here is about $35,000. Once again, we will not be able to confirm if the victim that died here in this fire was a child until that autopsy report is available later this afternoon. Reporting live here in Magnolia, Cleo Green, WBOC News. All right, Cleo. A late night fire in Accomack County makes it 30 fires in 30 days, according to state police. 27 of those confirmed arson. Last night's fire in Accomack is the third abandoned structure fire in five days. Two others reported over the weekend. Fire crews got the call for the abandoned home fire on Ticktown Road in Accomack around 9 last night. State investigators say it's still too early to determine if this fire is related to the string of arsons. The volunteer fire crews say the increase in the number of blazes is adding stress to the job. It's taken a serious toll on us because we all have jobs and families and it's taken a definite toll on us. I mean, I've got people out here that have to be at work at six o'clock in the morning. It's, it's taxing on us physically and mentally in our family lives. The first arson was reported November 13th in Accomack County. Somerset County residents still cleaning up after Superstorm Sandy. Folks with flood and home insurance feel 
they deserve more money. Somerset County officials set up meetings to make sure that they're treated fairly. Representatives from the Maryland Insurance Administration will be at Crisfield City Hall tomorrow from 9 to 4 and 10 to 2 on Saturday. If you have insurance and have questions about what's covered, you can show up. Some people in the county say their insurance leaves them feeling far from assisted. How is it that we, they accept our payments on our insurance policies every month? Um, and then when something like this happens, you're told you're covered, but when you file the claim, you're denied. How can they deny you your own money that you're paying in to your insurance in case something like this happened? And be sure to bring as much information for your insurance as possible if you plan on attending tomorrow or Saturday's meetings in Somerset County. Delaware's cut of a $42 million settlement will be about $633,000. The settlement concerns drug company Pfizer Incorporated's marketing of the drugs Zyvox and Lyrica. Delaware leaders say the company used unfair and deceptive practices to promote the drugs. Pfizer issued the statement the company denies any wrongdoing and is pleased to resolve the investigation. Delaware state lawmakers, the governor, and high-ranking state officials could see a pay raise. A meeting scheduled for today between the Delaware Compensation Commission could make that determination. Under state law, the commission's recommendations takes effect automatically early next year, unless lawmakers vote them down in their entirety. There will be two hours of public comment on the issue this afternoon in Delaware. We haven't, haven't had to deal with any really snow and not even hardly any wet yeah, weather. Not much all. going on. Mm -mm. Kind of scary, isn't it? Boring. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Law averages. Look out. No. Uh -oh. But uh, nothing in the foreseeable future. Really no nasty weather headed our way over the next couple of days. Triple track Doppler radar does show a tinge of green at the bottom of your screen. That is an association with a little bit of rainfall that has remained in our proximity, but I'm really not affecting us uh, for the most part. The rainfall has remained offshore over the last day or so with maybe just a few uh, smatterings of drizzle across the extreme south and eastern section of Delmarva, but this all in association with a low pressure center, which will continue to press away from the coast today. As a result, skies will start to clear out uh, probably by mid to late morning across the western sections of the peninsula and maybe into the afternoon hours for folks across eastern Delmarva. Lots of clarity to the skies overnight tonight, which should make for a colder overnight period, but temperatures uh, remaining in the upper 30s to lower 40s in most locations this morning, so a nice mild start, at least by mid-December standards. Winds are out of the north-northeast, anywhere between about 5 and 10 miles an hour, and that northerly component to the wind will keep temperatures right around our seasonal average for today. Cloud cover very thick out there right now, indicated by the darker shades of white. Uh, you see the, uh, I guess I should say brighter shades of white. You see the darker shades of gray. That indicates the more transparent clouds and no clouds across western Maryland right now. In fact, clearing out across much of central Pennsylvania as well, and, and that will follow suit eastward as we head through the day today. Area low pressure offshore will continue again to pull away from the coastline. High pressure scoots in from the west will provide us with lots of sunshine. A little system out to the west will provide us with our next chance of rain, and that's not going to materialize until we get into the weekend. So Futurecast walking us through the next 36 hours shows skies clearing out quite nicely. No active weather headed our way as we round out the work week, which means tons of sunshine as uh, we roll through our Friday. Temperatures in the mid-50s through the weekend. Rain chances return on Sunday, and we will be watching the potential for an area of low pressure to strengthen off of the coastline early next week. It could kick up uh, uh, the wave maybe provide us with some very windy conditions and some much needed rainfall. So we will see some rainfall chances probably through at least Tuesday of next week, maybe even spilling on over into Wednesday. But the latest computer models do have us drying out by midweek next week. Did you notice that front that was across the western part of the nation? Yeah. That had all these lows that were on it. For some reason, it looked like a Christmas, a string of Christmas lights to me. That's a positive way of thinking. I've never seen it look like, like that, that before. Huh. Crazy. So a Philadelphia protest in this morning's Top Talkers. What a group of electricians is doing at an apartment complex to get their message across. Plus, it's not about having the most lights decorating your home. Hey, like, we love your house, but we really love that. Or a neighbor's grabbing a lot of attention with very few lights on a creative Christmas display. It's 639 on WBOC News this morning. <laughs>
You're watching WBOC News This Morning with Jimmy Hoppe, Lacey Griffin, Cleo Green, meteorologist Brian Keene, and Chopper 16, covering the entire peninsula for Delmarva's news leader. 641 on WBOC News This Morning. Some of the most talked about stories in this morning's top talkers. Dangerous off-duty driving or a playful prank in California? Is he going to lose his job? That's very reckless. I would have done donuts in the middle of the tunnel. Police officer posted this. A police officer posted this video in a Lamborghini going 100 miles an hour through a 35 mile an hour zone in a tunnel. He even brags we were all drunk. That officer is now facing an internal investigation in California. A California baby is lucky to be alive this morning after police say a drunk driver crashed into a home and right into the baby's crib. Hit boom right here and it knocked her off all the way to the dresser and she hit the dresser. Police say the truck slammed through the wall, snapped the crib in half and sent the sleeping toddler flying. Fortunately, that California baby didn't even suffer a scratch. Imagine listening to a baby cry all day on purpose. I know everybody, they say they got the rights and that's fine. But don't we have rights too? Do we have to hear this constantly every day? Philadelphia electricians protesting the use of a non-union contractor to do electrical work at this apartment building. So they're blasting a baby crying through loudspeakers to get their message across. Kansas man ticketed for his Christmas lights. How could we affect more people that really don't get a chance to go see the lights, we'll bring it to them. Dave Hill has nearly 900 LED lights on his truck. It's a mobile Christmas display. But a city ordinance says he can't have red lights showing from the front in Kansas. And speaking of Christmas lights, if you can't beat them, well, for Pete's sake, just be creative enough to join them. They're like, we love your house, but we really love that. An Arizona homeowner has about 20,000 lights on his house here. His neighbor has some lights too. It's a sign that says ditto. The homeowner even put up the ditto sign for his Arizona neighbor because the neighbor didn't have a ladder. Lacey. Jimmy, you could have saved yourself a lot of time and energy. Why didn't I think of that? Ditto. That way or that way. <laughs> Another cloudy one today around 648. Brian lets us know when sunshine will return to the forecast. It's 644 on WBOC News this morning. WBOC presents another Jefferson Award winner. There are generous people, she's over generous. There are caring people, she's Thanks. over caring. At Mr. Paul's Legacy Restaurant in Salisbury, right before the Chamber of Commerce meeting, we surprised Sandra Fitzgerald Angelo. You are one of our WBOC Jefferson Award winners this year. Congratulations. Oh my gosh. I don't know what to say. Wow. If I could be one little part of that, to just make one little difference. Her friends shared stories. She gave away cars to some uh, Sandy victims. And I said, Sandy, why don't you tell me? She's like, well, because I don't want anyone to know. Well, that's the kind of person she is. She's the kind of person that'll go to one of the races she sponsors and then run alongside somebody and say, come on, push yourself. They say Sandy doesn't sit on the sidelines. When Sandy hears about a problem in the community, her mind immediately goes to, how can I make a difference? and she puts things into action. She just doesn't talk about it. She doesn't. Friends say it's simple for Sandy. She wants to inspire other people to do the same. That's why Sandra Fitzgerald Angelo is a WBOC Jefferson Award winner. The 2013 Jefferson Awards are made possible through the support of our local sponsors, Subway and Chesapeake Utilities.
Well, not too much to talk about out there this morning. Rainfall sits just off our southeastern coastline. We are blanketed with the clouds to start the day today, but not really expecting any measurable rain here on Delmarva. In fact, the clouds will start to clear out as we hit the afternoon. Time for a little color of the weather. This one brightening us up after a couple of dreary days here on the peninsula. This one sent in by Abigail Taylor from Snow Hill Elementary School and depicting a nice day for the birds and the bees. Well, probably not any bees left this time of year, but but uh, definitely some birds to be had. It looks like they're going to see some cloudy skies if they're flying out to the bus stop this morning. Temperatures in the upper 30s to lower 40s, so maybe a little chill in the air, but certainly could be colder. And in fact, the sky is already starting to clear just off to our west, and we'll see that trend follow suit across Delmarva as we progress throughout the morning. Temperatures in the mid 30s to lower 40s, depending upon where you are, and, and temperatures will remain a couple degrees uh, shy of where we should be this time of year because of the northerly component to the wind, which will blow at about 5 to 10 miles an hour today. So banking on the upper 40s for most locations today. If you like it a little warmer, won't have to wait long. I'll let you know when the 50s return to the forecast coming up in about seven minutes. We're asking you to help us make it a very Merry Christmas for children in need here on Delmarva. Bless Our Children is an initiative of the Draper Holdings Charitable Foundation. The money we raise goes to charities and they buy gifts for the children. You can help. All you have to do is send a card and a donation and we'll put your card right here on our tree. We still need some more cards. So, uh, you, so far we've raised $140,100 for Bless Our Children. That's great, but we've got to keep it going. Send a card and a donation to 1729 North Salisbury Bowl of Arts, Salisbury, Maryland, 21801. A few people to thank this morning. We want to thank Ronnie and Nancy Skinner of Allen. Thanks for your card and your donation. And thank you, Betty and Ed Nabb of Cambridge. Thank you so much. And of course, Delmarva Business is playing a huge part through our Hebring Saving Banks Challenge. Let's make sure every child on Delmarva has a very Merry Christmas. Jimmy. Well, this morning, Sports Scott Abraham lets you know how the Delmar girls basketball team fared at home against St. Thomas More. And in the college ranks, Maryland took on Monmouth. I'll let you know if the Terps could pick up another win. It's 6.50 on WBOC News this morning. And this morning's breakfast bite. Did you know the practice of collecting nut crackers in the United States began in the early 50s? Hmm. Good morning, everybody. After a season opening loss to Kentucky, the Maryland men's basketball team hasn't lost since. Granted, the competition is not at the same level as the Wildcats, 
But all the Terps can do is beat the teams on their schedule. Conference play quickly approaching. Maryland can use all the wins they get. Out to the Comcast Center, the Terps facing Monmouth. First half, Maryland doing some damage from the outside. Nick Faust buries the trifecta, and he was just warming up. Late in the half, Faust jacking them up and knocking them down. The Terps led by 10 at the break. Second half, Maryland goes inside to the big fella. Alex Len, big slam underneath. The Terps win 71 to 38. Girls basketball action. The Salisbury School hosting Delmarva Christian. Beginning of the third quarter, the Dragons adding to their 13 point lead to Myra Selby. The steal and finish. She would complete the three point play. The Royals not about to go down without a fight. Jane Stevens comes up with a loose basketball. Layup is good, plus the foul. Delmarva Christian keeping it close but they did not have an answer for Selby. The sophomore scored a game-high 22 points. The Salisbury School is a winner, 55-32. Delmar taking on St. Thomas More first quarter. The Ravens came out shooting. Callie Echeverry connects from long range. St. Thomas More grabs a two-point lead. The Wildcats turn to Deja Brown. Nice little crossover, scores the bucket inside. A couple of possessions later, Brown stops Pops and hits the jumper. Game high, 29 points. Delmar goes on for the 53-39 victory. High school wrestling scoreboard. Parkside gets past Easton. Mardella all over North Dorchester. And in the Henlopen Conference, Cape is a winner over Seaford. And that was your look at sports. Hey, have a great day. Ready for some more good news? Temperature is going to be warming up over the weekend. Mm, around 658, Brian lets us know just how toasty Saturday and Sunday will be. It's 655 on WBOC News this morning. And in this morning's breakfast bite, according to German folklore, nutcrackers were given as keepsakes to bring good luck to your family and protect your home. Ooh. Chomp, chomp, chomp. <laughs>
And in this morning's breakfast nibble, yeah, German folklore says a fierce protector. The nutcracker bears its teeth to the evil spirits and serves as a traditional messenger of good luck and goodwill. And it might come in handy if you have like a walnut or something. You never know. Yeah. I always walnut. used them wrong. I'd put the nut down and bang it. <laughs> I don't know if it that's It was effective, right way. but it worked. So grab the coat as you head out, another chilly one. Yes, Mom, sorry about the table. Um, yeah, we are going to need the coat this morning. Temperatures in the upper 30s to lower 40s. We will see the upper 40s this afternoon, maybe even some lower 50 degree readings. Skies should start to clear within the next couple of hours across western Delmarva and follow suit across the east as we progress through the afternoon. Lots of uh, end of the day sunshine leading to clear skies overnight tonight and temperatures a little bit cooler. We'll be bottoming out just below the freezing mark as we wake up tomorrow and then the mid 50s through the upcoming weekend. Slight chance for a few scattered showers to wrap up the weekend on Sunday. Maybe some more substantial rain and possibly some wind Monday into Tuesday of next week. We'll be watching an area of low pressure maybe taking shape off the coast. Have to keep an eye on that, I guess. Like that. Well, we're going to move into position for another look at your local news and weather coming up in 30 minutes. Now coming up on CBS this morning, House Speaker John Boehner tells members of the House don't make plans for Christmas. Major Garrett has new information on the fiscal cliff negotiations. And be sure to tune in for the latest with WBOC News at noon. And don't forget for the latest news, weather, sports, or Brian Keene's specialized rubberized <laughs> nutcracking pad. You can log on to WBOC.com and get it now. Again, Mom, sorry about the bit. <laughs>